Good morning, witches. I have never done a vlog on this channel. Well, that's not true. I did do one vlog of my coven celebrating Beltane together, but I have never done a solo vlog and I kind of want to do it. I see other YouTubers doing it. It looks fun. I'm doing lots of witchy things this weekend, so this may turn out absolutely horrible. I am not a cinematographer, so let's just like experiment and see what happens. And I'd love to take you along with my weekend plans. I definitely have a lot on the agenda, but I did want to say this is my favorite tea right now and you have to check it out. It is snowy owl tea. It's called ultraviolet. Put that up on the screen so you can see it, but it has green tea, lemongrass, butterfly pea flower, and violet flavor. So it is so good. It's seriously the best tea I've ever had. And as you can see, it changes colors, which is really cool. It starts out blue. You just do a little squirt of uh, lemon juice and then it turns purple. And it's just kind of like some little kitchen witchery. I mean, technically it's science because of the butterfly pea flower. We know it changes color, but still it's fun. So the agenda for today, I would love to do some spell crafting this morning. There's a couple things that I need to do for my cousin, which I'll kind of go into in a second. But then later today, I'm headed to a punk rock flea market, which I thought would be really fun to take you along for that. And then who knows where the rest of the day will take us. So we'll see. I don't know if this is going to be a one day vlog or a two day vlog. So We'll see as it goes. So the spell crafting that I would like to do with you, my cousin just bought her first house, which is super exciting. She's just moving in um, this weekend with her husband and I'm gonna come over there to do a full house blessing. We are going to clear all the stagnant negative energies with a cleansing. We're gonna banish some ener energies that she's been feeling in the space. We are going to set up her wards and put some bind runes on the windows and doors. And then we're gonna go back through the house one last time using an herbal blend for prosperity, abundance, and new beginnings. So I need to make two different herbal blends this morning. The first one I need to make for the initial smoke cleansing where we were just cleansing the house and banishing any negative and unwanted energies. And I think we finally settled on using rosemary, garden sage, and cedar. Those were the three that we ended up settling on. It had kind of a combination of all the things that we were looking for. And what I'll end up doing is I'm going to to bring my cauldron over to her place and then I love using charcoal discs for this but you light up a charcoal disc you put it in your cauldron and then you take the ground herbs and sprinkle it over the charcoal disc and then it smokes for a really long time which is a great thing for house blessings or like house cleansings because obviously when you're doing an entire house you need something that's going to smoke for a significant amount of time I don't particularly like the herb bundles because you have to keep relighting them over and over again I love using herb bundles when I'm just cleansing an item or like cleansing a room really quick But if I'm gonna cleanse a whole house I love using charcoal discs because it just burns a lot longer and it's a lot easier So we're gonna make that herbal blend first for the protection cleansing banishing all that stuff And then I wanted to make a second herbal blend for the prosperity abundance and new beginnings because after cleansing a space I personally feel that it feels it's almost like a void. It feels a little bit empty of energy and we want to kind of refill that space and make it feel happy and lighthearted. I don't know if you've ever cleansed a space and then it just felt like lonely afterwards. <laughs> That's how I feel. I like to cleanse a space and then I like to bring in new energies, like new fresh energies that are in alignment with what I'm hoping for. So for the second blend, I am going to use cinnamon. Cinnamon's great for uh, prosperity, abundance. It's also great for just like spicing up your life in general. Cinnamon's fabulous for that. We're also going to use chia seeds. I love using chia seeds to signify new beginnings. And this is very much a new beginning for her and her husband, you know, starting their life together in their new home. And then I'm also going to use orange peels and lemongrass. And both of those are just really happy and uplifting plant spirits, at least in my experience that is, especially orange peel. I really want to bring in that happiness, the lightness, the positivity for them both. So yeah, let's just craft these two herbal blends together. I was thinking about filming the whole ceremony with my cousin and showing you how I do a full house cleansing and blessing because there's like a whole thing that we do. I mean, we acknowledge the house spirit, we walk room to room, we do the bind runes, it, it's a process. 
so I kind of wanted to film that, but then I ultimately decided that I really wanted it to be kind of a sacred ceremony just between her and I, as we did this with her house. So I won't be filming it, but I'll at least do the blends on camera with you, and I'll definitely share the recipes on screen as well. So yeah, let's just do a little bit of witchiness, and then we'll get ready to go to the punk rock flea market, and then see what else happens. So while we're here, I kind of wanted to show you this new Oracle deck that I just received. I got it as a gift from one of my coven mates. So Christina, if you're watching this, thank you. I'm really excited to work with it a little bit more. It's the 40 Servants deck, um, and this is the booklet that comes with it. But I've talked about servitors, I think, quite a bit on my channel now. I do have a video about what servitors are and how to create them. So I'll link that down below in the description box because I'm not really, you know, going to go into all that in this video. But I also have a protection magic video where I talked about my personal practice a little bit with servitors and the magical entities that I like to invoke. So I'll link that video down below as well. I talk about my personal servitors and I have one that's kind of like a servitor tulpa hybrid that I work with. But anyways, I love working with servitors and this whole deck, let me show you. Here's the back of the cards here. But this whole deck is dedicated to different um, servant archetypes. So like the explorer, the master, the devil, the thinker. I mean, there's pretty much any archetype that you could imagine in here. And I haven't even looked at all the cards yet. This is really, really neat. But you can use these as just a regular oracle deck, you know, like using it for divination or something. Or you can use it to help you create your servitor. So let's say, for example, let's go with the witch here. Or actually, you know what? Ooh, here's a road opener. That would be really good in a road opener spell. Ooh, the sun. Okay, now I'm just getting distracted, but <laughs> let's say you are creating a servitor that really matches this monk archetype. You could use this in the creation of your servitor by using this as the house, because when you create a servitor, you want to have some sort of home for it to live in. It's kind of like a genie in a bottle situation. So this could, this card could be its home. So I'm excited to work with these cards and, um, 
yeah, how cool is that? I just had to show that to you because it's a brand new deck I got and I, I've never seen anything for servitors or even remotely anything for chaos magic. It seems like nothing is created for chaos magic. Anyways, just had to show that to you because I thought it was really neat. My fiance and I just got to the punk rock flea market and I have absolutely no idea what to expect. I've never been to a punk rock version of a flea market before so hopefully we find some good stuff. I'm hoping that I'm able to find something that I can turn into some sort of magical tool so I don't know, we'll see. So I came across this booth and the company name is Witch Queen and it's owned by a couple and I spoke to one of the owners and they are so nice. They have a collection of punk items, witchy items and artwork that they create themselves. The owner that I talked to was the artist and they are ridiculously talented. So I'm going to drop their Instagram in the description box, definitely give them a follow. I ended up picking up this besom and another candle snuffer. So this is really awkward vlogging in front of my fiance in front of a really trashy part of town, but like this is the worst part of town anyways. Um, the flea market was a lot of leather, I would say. Would you say it was a lot of leather? That's yeah, definitely a lot of leather for sure. Um, but I got, so besides the items that I got at Witch Queen, I also got these earrings, gorgeous. And then I also got a couple candles, which are hilarious. This is a Black Wednesday Adams candle, which I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but every time I want to channel my inner Wednesday Adams, uh, I definitely plan on lighting this. And I don't know if any of you have seen Schitt's Creek, but Moira is my favorite character. It's my fiance's favorite character as well. She's a little bit of a diva, so white Moira Rose candle um, that I plan to light anytime I want to channel my inner diva and be super extra. So yeah, I would say definitely worth it. It was kind of a small haul, but just the experience of going there and seeing all the leather. There was even this vendor that had plants in a leather strapped holder with studs on it, which was pretty freaking cool. So yeah, worth it. Just got back from the punk rock flea market adventures and that was actually really fun. I definitely wanna go there again. I love the candles that we found, the Moira Rose candle and the Wednesday Adams candle. I think those were my favorite finds, although I'm really happy with everything that we were able to find today, but I'm really excited to use those candles in my magical practice. I'm not really sure how I'm going to use those yet, so I need to brainstorm a little bit, but the archetypes of Wednesday Adams and Moira Rose, I feel like I could definitely use that in my practice. So we'll see, I'm not really sure. So the agenda for the rest of the evening, I definitely want to do some magical self-care, maybe do a ritual bath of some sorts. Not quite sure what that's going to look like yet. And then I also need to prep some spell work for my coven. So I think I've kind of mentioned this in my videos previously, but the word coven, it's more like a circle of magical practitioners. We are very non-traditional 
traditional and not all of us identify as witches. We all identify as different types of magical practitioners, but we meet every single week and when we do meet, the themes are a little bit different each time. So this meeting that we have coming up, we are going to build dream spells together. So we are going to create, whether it's a spell jar, a dream spell bag, it can be literally anything the magical practitioner wants it to be. But what I'll be creating is a dream bag that I can put underneath my pillow at night just to help enhance my dreams. I do like to do a lot of lucid dreaming and to really help me remember dreams and understand the symbolism a little bit better, maybe even open myself up to talking to deities or other entities in my dreams. That would be really nice. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of dream work this evening as well and just kind of prepping that spell work so that way it's all ready to go before the meeting starts when we actually, you know, do the, the spell work together. So I think that's on the agenda and let's just cue a relaxing witchy montage. Here are my ingredients for the dream charm bag and I'm going to be using a purple bag because purple is great for dreams, it's great for psychic development, really anything spiritual related. And then I'm going to be using some rosemary for protection. I really want to be protected during my dreams because I tend to have a lot of bad dreams, a lot of nightmares and so it's nice to have something that is protecting me while I sleep. That is for my own psyche, you can do whatever you want for your dream spell. I'm I'm also going to use rose petals, which I have a very personal relationship with rose petals, and my purpose in using rose petals is that I really want to invoke good, happy dreams. I want to have lovely dreams that don't wake me up at 3 a.m. <laughs> and then I'm also going to be using blue cornflower. If you've never used blue cornflower before, it's excellent for developing psychic abilities, and you can even use blue cornflower in divination as well. So I'm going to be using this to really enhance the messages that I receive in my dreams. I really want to be able to talk to my spiritual entities in my lucid dreams. I want to be able to receive clear messages and so that's what the blue cornflower is going to be for. And then I also have three 
amethyst hearts. Amethyst is great for uh, dream spells or sleep spells in general. And then I have some angelite here as well. And then I have my sigil. The sigil that I created for this is a combination. It's a mega sigil. It's kind of what I call it because it is three different sigils all rolled into one sigil. So I just call it a mega sigil. You know, it works, whatever. I'm a chaos magician, so I do what I want. But <laughs> this sigil is going to be for three specific intentions that I have. The first intention is that I want to remember all my dreams. I also want to receive clear messages in my dreams and I want to have happy dreams. So those were the three sigils that I rolled into one. And then what I will do is I will fold this towards me because I really want to bring that energy towards me. So I'll fold it towards me, turn it clockwise, fold it towards me again, turn it clockwise, and then one more time, fold it towards me. And then I will be putting all of this in the charm bag and then enchanting it during our meeting. It is the next day and I decided I wanted to come out in my backyard to just enjoy a morning meditation. I've got the cat on my lap. I've got the dog within five feet. So it's really not a solo adventure this morning, but that's okay. Also, you can kind of see there is my garden over there. I would love to do a garden tour at some point because I do a lot of green witchcraft. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for watching this whole vlog if you've made it to this point. This was really fun to do. I've always seen other YouTubers vlog. It looks like a fun time. It is so much harder than it looks. I did not realize how much goes into making a vlog look good. Like I am, I have a lot of room for improvement. I already know what I need to do better next time. So thank you for just being on this journey with me. I watch other YouTubers and their vlogs are just, oh, so gorgeous. So that's a pipe dream. I would love to be <laughs> like that one day. But I also just love witch vlogs because you get to see what witches actually look like. There's this stigma in our society that we are some, you know, goblin that lives deep in the woods and we're evil and scary and all that. And most of us aren't. I mean, let's be real. Sometimes I am a goblin and I do want to live deep in the woods, but <laughs> I'm just a regular person. You know, if I were walking along the street, people don't know that I'm a witch. I mean, they really don't. And so I love watching these witch vlogs because you get to kind of see that we're all just regular people. And I also just love watching other people cast spells and do their spell crafting. It helps me stay more connected to my magical practice. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that in this vlog. But I just wanted to say, I hope you all have a very blessed day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.